computer. Okay, if you could um, maybe start off uh, explaining um, uh, what you're going to be talking about uh, tonight. I'm just going to be talking about the fact that I was arrested on New Year's Eve for taking pictures of and questioning cops who were assaulting a female who had committed no crime and had uh, done nothing to uh, put anyone in danger on New Year's Eve. Okay. Do you want to maybe talk a little more specific about the, the story and how it uh, played out? Right. So I was driving home. I was a designated driver. Uh, I was completely sober. Uh, we were just going home for the night. I was going to go drop my friend off. Um, we needed to fill up the truck with gas, so we pulled into a 7-Eleven about 1 o'clock a.m. And we pulled next to a car that was pulled over for a DUI. Uh, we were filling up. We are noticing that the female uh, driver was out doing a field sobriety test with, uh, with no jacket on. It was pretty cold and in high heels. And uh, the first thing I said to my friend was, there's no way she's going to pass this field sobriety test. Um, but we just filled up the gas and there was not much we could do. There was a passenger in the female, uh, a female passenger in the car, and she was just uh, just sitting there passively, not doing anything uh, that I could notice other than uh, talking on a cell phone. She had a cell phone in her hand. And when we finished filling up the gas, we were getting ready to leave and it was just too bad that this girl was going to get a DUI. That's what it seemed like to us. Um, but uh, there was no reason for us, uh, us to stay. And as we left, uh, as we were about to leave, we just hear this violent scream from the woman. I immediately jump up, run back to the back of the truck and see these two cops yanking this woman out of the car, uh, throwing her to the ground, twisting her arms behind her back. And she was screaming and crying. I immediately pull out my Blackberry, try to take pictures. She looks at me and says, please film this uh, as she's crying. And so at that point, I start asking the cops why they're hurting her, why they're assaulting her, what she did wrong because it was pretty clear to me that she didn't do anything wrong. Um, they took her back towards the back cruiser and the cop who began the field sobriety test then peels off and comes after me asking me why I'm taking pictures and who do I think I am. I said that I'm allowed to, that he's a public official uh, and that I'm allowed to film him. He got in my face, he started pushing me, he, he uh, pushed me back into the back of the truck and uh, I just began yelling at him, get out of my face, you have no right to touch me, why are you touching me? And at some point he arrested me and they initially said I was interfering with the investigation. Then they took me to the Batmobile where they made me blow uh, for, uh, into a breathalyzer for DUI even though I wasn't pulled over, even though I was completely sober. Uh, then they, when I blew a zero they said that I broke the machine. And then by the time I got to the jailhouse it, I found out that I was charged with a felony harassment with a public official for spitting on an officer that carries a two to ten year jail sentence. Uh, fortunately, I immediately went out, started asking people to come forward because they interfered with three witnesses at the scene who uh, were there and my friend uh, couldn't get information from them because the cops interfered with them. Uh, posted ads on Craigslist and people came forward, one with a video, which I was pretty fortunate uh, of. And uh, because of that, it just changed the entire uh, situation around where uh, originally it was cops create lies about a person who interfere or supposedly interfere with them abusing a female um, you know where I could have gone to jail where I had to deal with you know felony charges and uh, worried about proving my innocence and now it's pretty obvious that the cops lied uh, and now the cops are are the ones who have to answer for their actions and uh, this happened where in Austin Texas okay. um, right very close to downtown um, it's uh, it's a place that a lot of people are partying on New Year's. Uh, the person who pulled over the woman for the DUI was is the most prolific DUI cop in Austin. Over 300 arrests per year. A uh, huge revenue generator for the city. Uh, has had lots of problems with other people. A lot of people have come forward since this time, uh, since this incident, to tell me about their own personal stories with this cop, uh, his out of control behavior, his aggressiveness, uh, his. Um, you know, he's just very, very driven to arrest people for DUIs and, uh, and you know, other people have come forward as well throughout the city uh, and, and nationally as well to talk about their own personal stories of, of police abuse and, 
and police corruption. What's interesting about my case is I was just arrested. Uh, I didn't get beat up. I didn't get shot. Uh, I just am dealing with a, a felony charge, which we're going to be able to beat because, thank God, uh, witnesses stepped forward and one had video. But uh, there's a lot of people who stepped forward with their own personal stories where they were black or Hispanic, they were poor, wrong part of town, they had priors, uh, they didn't have video, whatever the situation may be, they were people who no one took their word. When it came down to the cops' word versus theirs, uh, the cops were the ones who were believed. And uh, a lot of people have been abused and uh, set up by cops and they had no recourse. And uh, it, it's pretty disturbing. But um, the benefit for me was one, I have a background which allowed people to realize that, um, that well, maybe the cops are lying. Uh, and unfortunately, not a lot of people have that same benefit. And I had someone who actually took video and witnesses who stepped forward, which again, people don't uh, necessarily have that. So hopefully, through this, um, because I realize that I, I'm, I, I'm very lucky. <laughs> you know, if I was young and black, and had I not put my arms up right away, I, I might have been shot. Who knows? So hopefully, through this, people uh, will question officers. They won't be so quick to believe uh, what officers say uh, when it comes down to a he said, she said thing between uh, victims and the police. And hopefully, people will start filming more. People will start protecting each other by uh, filming interactions with cops, so that. If the cops are the ones who are acting like criminals, that the that the civilians, the citizens, are the ones who are protected. When you talk about your background, you're talking about military background as a veteran. Is that what yeah? So giving I, I, you a, a, like yeah. a, a, a greater sense of of um, sort of at least making you at that higher level of citizen, right, perhaps. Right. Well, I was the first one in my family to graduate high school. I went to college. I was the first one in my family to go to college. Um, I, I come from a military family. I went to West Point. I served uh, for five years in the military as an Airborne Ranger qualified engineer officer. I did a tour in Kosovo, a tour in Iraq where I had a really um, impressive job. Then I left the military. I went to Stanford for my MBA. Uh, I was an entrepreneur. Now I teach. Uh, I'm trying to uh, affect change through education reform in America. And so, uh, you know, I've worked with kids my whole life. Um, I've been on non the boards of nonprofits. There's just a lot of things about my resume, I guess you could say, my pedigree, where people are all of a sudden like, oh, look at this. This guy does no wrong. And it's a shame, right? Because every person's an individual. And it doesn't matter where you go to school. It doesn't matter what you do on, you know, for your job. It doesn't matter what your parents were. You know, you should be viewed as an individual, and your rights should be inherent. You know, by the fact that you're a living person, and uh, a lot of people give my word extra credence, and they are quicker to question the 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 words of the cops, especially since these witnesses have come forward and the video has come forward. Um, but fortunate for me, but it's very unfortunate that we live in a society like that, where uh, apparently our civil liberties aren't universal. Right? Um, it takes all these things to line up to even have a chance to be able to fight uh, a, f a setup by cops. And uh, again, as I said, if I had priors, if I was of a different race, if I was uh, caught in a different part of town, um, if I didn't put my hands up right away and, and like make very clear that I wasn't a threat, it could have turned out a lot worse than just being charged with, uh, with a felony for spitting on an officer. Uh, I, I've talked to people who have been beat down by the cops. I've talked to people who have uh, been uh, framed for much more. People who actually served time in jail for crimes that they didn't commit. And there's people who die. There's people who get killed by the cops. And uh, I'm not saying that all cops are like that, but there's enough of them out there that it's, it's a real concern. Uh, you know, are we really free in America when we have uh, a bunch of people walking around with badges and guns who have a very unique monopoly on force where they can do things to us with very little recourse. Uh, very few cops end up going to prison for these crimes, for false imprisonment, kidnapping, uh, you know, perjury. Uh, but people are going to prison for things that they never did, you know, crimes that they never committed. It's a, it's a, you know, that is not at all in line with a free society, uh, with, 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 the, uh, with the ideals of liberty. Um, you know, or, or even the concept of limited government. 
do, uh, do you see this incident that happened to you as something that was a central trigger on, on making you more of an activist? I was already a pretty strong liberty activist. Um, you know, I was doing stuff in Austin. I was uh, doing some things, you know, mobilizing with the Texans for accountable government for certain issues. Um, I was a Ron Paul activist. Uh, I, I have vocally been opposed to police corruption, uh, especially, um, you know, uh, the death penalty. You know, I'm a big fan of the Innocence Project. A lot of a lot of innocent people accused of murder and uh, convicted of murder and they spend uh, decades in prison only to find out that they were innocent the whole time and they're a prosecutor or cops you know were doing stuff that was unethical that ended up sending them to prison meanwhile the uh, actual perpetrator still running around so I've, I've, I've been an activist but when this happened to me it really did uh, take me to another level as far as understanding um, you know how how quickly your life can be destroyed by uh, by the state, how quickly uh, one bad actor can really uh, just, um, you know, just, just really uh, destroy lives. And the people who've come out tell me about how their lives have, lives have been destroyed, or the family members of people, uh, people whose lives have been destroyed, uh, has really shaken me. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's definitely reinvigorated me, and uh, it's made me more of an activist. Um. Could you maybe talk a little bit about your opinions or, or experiences with the, the sort of the diversity among libertarians? Because you're talking about um, Austin that uh, is a very young yeah. city and very progressive roots, um, and and then coming out here to more sort of conservative West Texas yeah. and and um, and just that that people are being drawn to together that might not have the same background. And how, what do you think about that? I think it's very unique within uh, a libertarian mindset, uh, with the, uh, political philosophy, if, if you have to break things down into like political factions, such as so-called conservatives, so-called liberals. Uh, because libertarians um, and, and you know people uh, like-minded voluntarists or, or whatever category you want to place people in, um, anarchists, uh, is they view people as individuals. They, pe they view people based on, you know, what worth does this person have for the sake of living? You know, what rights, what liberty uh, do they have for the sake of living? Not because they, they fit into a particular demographic group, not because uh, they reside within uh, some sort of political boundary. And so it's un I find it very unique because they don't resort to identity politics nearly as much. And the fact that you are a conservative from West Texas, you're uh, a liberal from uh, New York City, you know, you're uh, you know um, a free stater in New Hampshire. It, none of that matters. Um, you know, the decisions that you make in your life, your your own character, uh, the uh, the people you you choose to surround yourself with, things like that matter because they they are able to uh, give insight into the type of person you might be. You know, into you know what your your integrity and values might be. But every single person in of themselves uh, is guaranteed certain liberties just by the fact that, that they live. And the state uh, or bad actors uh, can't ever give you more liberty. All they can do is take it away. So um, I, the great thing I love about libertarians is it doesn't matter what part of the country I'm in, uh, I find them usually very open, very accepting, and the, our backgrounds are usually just something to talk about, just something to, you know, maybe in a joking manner, just like, you know, be uh, you know self um, deprecating, but that's that's about the extent of it. Is there, is there something that libertarians, as the outsiders might think of a, a monolithic group being, is there a libertarian platform issue that is not an Antonio issue? Like, is there something I disagree with libertarians yeah, about? Is there, is, what do you disagree? With? With the party, if there is such a thing. There's not much I disagree with uh, with the party. Uh, Libertarian Party, like any party, can uh, you know it it stands the risk of being co-opted uh, of of having people who uh, don't necessarily have as pure an ideology as I would like coming in and using the political party to their benefit. You know, so um, there are libertarians who have advocated for war, for example, for interventionism. You know, that's something that I don't necessarily believe in. There are libertarians who advocate for um, 
you know, uh, extreme restrictions on immigration. That's something I don't believe in. But in general, the libertarian philosophy and the libertarian party, uh, most of the time, uh, picks up on, you know, I mean, it's called libertarian party for a reason. Um, you know, so I, I don't find myself at odds with the libertarian party. I'm a, I'm a big supporter. Um, Ron Paul is a Republican I support, but he's much more of a libertarian than he is a Republican. You know, I, I, I do not give support to any other party. If there's any part, party I support, it's the Libertarian Party because they're the only ones with the uh, with the ideals, um, you know, or they're the only ones uh, with a platform that fits my ideals.